All right, the Grizzlies uh, beat the Mav last night as John ja Moran nears John ja Moran, beg your pardon, nears a return to the court. He could return uh, tomorrow night. Uh, Dylan Brooks, uh, who had an eventful night himself with the whole jersey exchange snafu with Kyrie Irving, so everybody got their jokes off again at Dylan Brooks. Grizzlies win again. Brooks catches another L. Dylan Brooks said Ja even offered to come off the bench, which I was obviously, you know, shot down. I think he even got a standing ovation. Uh, John Morant did, but back to Kyrie Irving. Uh, again, the Jersey snap who got a lot of attention, but he also said that there's been an overload of judgment when it comes to John Morant, J. A. Adande. Um, and I love, I mean, you've covered the the NBA for years, sports in general, but the NBA closely for years in particular. And I love to hear your perspective on just how the Josh story has been covered. Especially given some of the shenanigans that players have gotten in the past, but not necessarily in the social media in the digital age, but how Jaws story has been covered the precedence for for Jaws behavior and, and, and cautionary tales and just where Jaws goes from here, Professor. I will say this. Uh, there's been selective outrage over who has a gun where uh, to, to borrow from the title of, of the Chris Rock show. Um, it, it, it's funny. He he gets in trouble for having a gun in an establishment called Shotgun Willies, where there's a big neon <laughs> sign with a, a shotgun outside. There. So <laughs> the notion, right, you can't have a gun. This is Shotgun Willies. It reminds me of the old movie, <laughs> Dr. Strangelove. You can't fight in here. This is the war room. And so <laughs> you know, the, the, the notion that he gets in trouble in a state where we have a, a member of Congress whose Christmas card featured her and her family and including her kids all Toting weapons, right? They're all holding open guns. Open carry state. Right, yeah. right. You know, I mean, the fact where we see, you know, I, I'm wondering, is Ja going to get suspended by the league or was he going to get invited to the next Republican convention? Because anytime somebody waves a gun, it seems like they're front and center and they're honored guests at the next Republican national convention. So, the, A, the selective outrage over someone with a gun where we see many people celebrated for guns. They're proud. They're waving guns left and right, including on their Christmas cards. They have guns. Mm -hmm. So it was interesting to me that, that this notion of the, this complete fascination that this country has, this worship of guns that the country has, but it depends who's holding the gun, right? And what they look like, uh, whether or not we choose to elevate them or to punish them. Now, certainly within the context of the NBA, yes, this is right. something that you can't can have, including the, the history of the NBA and, and the sometimes difficult racial tightrope that, that the NBA uh, walks and that David Stern fought to to uh, push back against. And, you know, you, you, Michael Smith, you mentioned the history of this, you know, obviously it, you thought back to, um, you thought back to Gilbert Renus and yep. what got him suspended. And, and it's funny that, again, there were serious allegations of, of John Morant, you know, flashing a weapon at a, at a teenage boy, as was alleged in that Washington Post story. Um, that's not what got him in trouble is this Instagram live thing. If you remember Gilbert Arenas bringing the guns into the locker room wasn't what got him suspended. It was doing the dance, the the, the finger guns dance in a warm up yeah. in a picture that went viral for its day that David Stern said we can't have that. And that's basically what led to the demise of his time in Washington. But it you certainly know what, got him suspended. Uh, he didn't get suspended till that picture yeah. of him with the finger guns and the warm ups got out there. But I, I want to get your perspective on this because I think uh, and, and tell me if you disagree. I think Adam Silver uh, and the NBA, I think they have gone out of their way to try to allow certain players to figure it out themselves before they come in. So that's why I think it's appropriate that Ja and Kyrie were hugging there because Kyrie was in the same situation. Hey, Kyrie, if you could just say, you know what, we're going to allow you just do a press conference. Just say you're not anti-Semitic and we can move on. And he wouldn't do it. And yeah. they suspended him. Ja had so many uh, examples and so many opportunities to just be like, hey, nah, nah, I'm not, you know, this is not, I'm, I'm not really about this. Story kept coming up. You mentioned the Washington Post. There were several Washington Post stories. There were se several incidents. And then eventually, I think the NBA said, okay, we got to do something because Ja Memphis ain't figuring out on their own. So we got to step in. I mean, and he was dead I, down that road. Yeah. It, it was similar to Gilbert Arenas. It's funny after the Washington Post 
story came out. So this stuff is out there about job weapons. Of course, we had the allegations where the Indiana Pacers felt like somebody had trained a, a laser sight on them from, from a car with, mm -hmm. with John Moran's buddies in it. Um, all this stuff was in the air, and I'm watching a game, and one of John's teammates hits a big shot, and John's doing like this. He's shooting guns, going back to the huddle on the sidelines. I'm thinking this is just, you know, you want to be careful of what you're putting out there. And then to go on Instagram Live, I mean, talk about, you know, self-inflicted damage. You know, no one shot this. This wasn't video, like, just like those pictures. With somebody else's in, gun. In the strip club making it rain. Right, right, right. With somebody I else's mean, why, well, Allegedly. What are you proving? Allegedly. Right? I mean, right. Well, yeah. well, the league investigation has determined, for their purposes at least, that, that it was somebody else's gun. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, yeah right. just the lack of awareness, you know, and, yes. and that's what... Yes. You know, Holly, to, to get back to what you were talking about, like, he's got to be, you got to read the room, you got to see what's out there. And yeah, yeah don't make us come in, because when we come in, it's going to be a lot more drastic. Well, I, I'm looking forward to hearing what he has to say for himself when he does eventually meet with the media, if he hasn't already. Um, well, he talked like with Jalen Rose, and I thought that was a mistake, too, because he sits down with Jalen Rose well, before he's eligible to play again. So my thing is, well, don't talk before you're fully reinstated, right? He wasn't reinstated yet. Like, what do you have to say? You know, well, how can you say you've learned yeah. your lessons yet? What updates can yeah. you provide? It's been like a week. You know, this, this is gonna well, be a long process. I, to, so to I sit saw, down and get that interview, I thought was wrong. I, I saw the interview. I meant what else he has to say. Just, I'll leave it at that. Um, but, um, but pun intended, hopefully he dodged a bullet here. Um, Jordan. <laughs> is uh, reportedly selling his majority uh, stake in the Charlotte Hornets, J.A. Uh, J.A. Adande, co-star of The Last Dance. Uh, Michael and I were talking about uh, Jordan as an owner, and, and in no way am I absolving or excusing the Hornets' putrid record with him at the helm. But I believe, and maybe this is me just being a Jordan sycophant that I am, I believe that Michael Jordan's failure as an owner is used to knock down the otherwise unassailable player's legacy a peg or two because for the most part, over the, and then a lot of ownership groups have changed, they've come and gone, they've gone through highs and lows, but for the most part, with some, a lot of, with, with some exceptions, but for the most part, he's not unlike most owners, uh, most of his fellow owners. Other than that, he's the greatest player in NBA history. Most of them, they have no idea what they're doing when it comes to management. Your thoughts on Jordan as an owner? I know the record. I'm just sad it. that it, that I'm sad that it didn't work out. And, and it's funny he spoke the last dance, uh, for which I appeared in three minutes and two seconds over the course of the <laughs> ten episodes. But um, you were like the second seconds. voice we not, heard, though. Not, not, you were not, like, I, you were I, like, I'm in there early. I'm the second talking head. That very you early. My Boban and NBA. Yeah, they were the right talking heads. Yeah. Uh, not nine, nine seconds less so bomb. Some somebody went through and they tracked every all the on air time for all the talking heads. So I, I got three three minutes and two seconds, I think. Um, but it, it's funny, it actually came on. I was watching the last episode of it uh just Sunday morning. I I, I was in a hotel and turned on TV and there it was. And you know, to see Michael at his peak again and to think that we're what, a good quarter century beyond that, and you know. To realize, and I think part of this is realizing that he will never be as great at anything else again as he was at playing basketball, you know, and, and so many people, athletes, they're forced to retire at such an early stage of their life relative to the rest of their lives that they're constantly searching for that next thing. It'll be interesting to see Tom Brady, who has been the hungriest and, and the greatest and has had so much passion and so much success in that phase of his life. Will he be able to find anything? That comes close. Michael Jordan has searched and searched and searched again mm. for two decades, including trying to come back and play basketball one last shot and 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 see how he could stand up against those young guys. <laughs> you know, Smith, you talk about, you know, we we, we sometimes use this against them. I, I don't think so. Uh, we don't use the Washington Wizards. Not, not we against against him. <laughs> some, pe right. some people but, do. But, but, some uh, people the, do. The, the Forget it, forgetting uh, how great he was at, in Washington. Right. Right. I <laughs> that think is it's been that, that but but I, th I think you know the the last dance did show. A whole new generation what exactly he was about and how great he was mm -hmm. and how much he cared and how how driven he was uh so i i don't think this is i i always say uh you know your, your legacy is set there, there's the elvis exception where you know sometimes we remember the vegas elvis as opposed to elvis at his peak 
But for the most part, I, I call it it's a Pat Rileyism, or it sounds like a Pat Rileyism. The principle of peak preservation that we remember people <laughs> at their best. And when we think of Michael Jordan, when the name yeah. Michael Jordan comes up, uh, we're gonna remember him in that Bulls jersey. You know, yeah, doing sick. Couple. We're gonna remember Jordan Game Six. You know, that holding yeah. holding the shot, the follow through up after that, and then and then the six, and then uh, yeah. I, we never got to see until the last dance where. He's giddy in the locker room back with Scotty going, six of them, six of them. <laughs> that was one of my favorite parts because that, that was Michael like we normally don't see him. You know, in that throes of ecstasy after winning his sixth champion, championship, he's just, he's getting ready to pop the bottle of champagne and just saying, six of them, six of them. <laughs> That's the type of Michael Jordan we're going to remember. Well, speaking of uh, people we will never uh, forget uh, and whose legacies we'll always remember because his name is synonymous with uh, playing through pain with, uh, you know, showing up just to give your team a boost. Like even people who never watched him play know the name uh, Willis Reed, who has died at the age of 80. Uh, the National Basketball Retired Players Association announced on Tuesday. He, of course, uh, won two NBA titles uh, with the New York Knicks. And um, who could forget Will Willis Reed coming out of the tunnel? Uh, it's just it's one of the iconic images uh, throughout NBA history. You got any Willis Reed stories? Uh, either one of you guys. I don't know if you, you know, Michael. I, I do. Your, your NBA beat days. Yeah, what you got? W Willis Reed once inquired about my availability. The closest I ever came to having a chance to play in the NBA. I was up doing a story on, on Willis Reed uh, or uh, doing a story on the Nets. They were still the New Jersey Nets, of course, in the 90s. And uh, they were having some some issues with the point guard position. Kenny Anderson had come and gone and, and they were looking for a point guard. And I was talking to Willis Reed about it when he, he was the general manager there. And he's, he, he was out ideas. At one point he turned to me and said, can you play point guard? <laughs> I, said, I, don't, I don't play a little point back in my day, but I, I don't think I'm what you're looking for. Uh, but that's as close as I ever came to having a chance to play in the NBA. So thank you for Willis Reed for even for a split second wow. for allowing me to entertain the notion of playing in the NBA, but I, I think it proves your point, Michael, because he was not great. He did not enjoy great success uh, as as the general manager of the Nets. And yet the principle of pre-preservation, when you see the name Willis Reed, when you learned of his passing away, I'm guaranteed just like everyone else, Mike, we thought of that grainy footage of him coming down the hallway yep. of Madison Square Garden out of the tunnel and, and onto the court, limping his way into to score those four points that he did. So so right. we will remember him at that at that peak moment, just like we always will remember Michael Jordan at his peak. Yep. Hey, uh did he ever offer you a job, Michael MVP? Holly? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, before before we get to uh one more thing on the NBA with Warren hit with you before we uh you know change courses. Uh would love to get your thoughts on just the contemporary uh, discourse around MVP. Willis Reed, a former MVP, the award now named after Michael Jordan. It went from Nikola Jokic about to join that rare air of being a three-time MVP to the people who thought, who were inclined to vote for Nikola Jokic have now been bullied uh, into like, <laughs> no, you, you better not put this dude in the, in the company with Larry Bird. <laughs> it, it, it's been a disinformation campaign. A disinformation campaign <laughs> has come out against Nikola also, Jokic. But it's also, Joel Embiid is just is just, is just taking that thing. So I just I just would love to know what you think of the the race right now. Now that we're getting close to the end of the season, which we should have waited for to begin with, but also just the way that the conversation and the debate around MVP has evolved in all your years of the race the and, and voting for the, the race award. and the race uh, <laughs> uh, the, 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 in the MVP. The, the the first part we should have been waiting, you know, and I know. Part of the problem is, you know, and and sorry, shows like this contribute to it, but uh, oh, we, you know, we start we having the did. we start having the MVP debate in November. You know, <laughs> like we get two weeks in, who's the MVP? No one's the MVP in November. You know, <laughs> uh, we 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 did it a, a couple years ago. Steph Curry had that incendiary April where he's just going off, scoring 40 every game. Oh, this means he's the MVP. No, it means he's the Player of the Month for the month of April. You know, look at the totality of the season, and it wasn't enough. Um, Let's wait. What happened to waiting? I remember Steph Curry's first MVP, 2015. I had a vote. And I was leaning toward James Harden the majority of the season. You know, I thought James Harden had been the MVP. And then there was a late uh, TNT game, and I'm watching Curry. Might have been against the Rockets even, but he put on an MVP-type performance. And 
that was sort of the clincher for me. And, and I think people should allow for those moments. They should allow to see how it plays out. And after everyone seemingly had said that, determined that Jokic was going to be a three-time MVP, he sort of fell off. Jokic and Giannis both came up to re-enter the chat and to make it clear that this thing is far from decided and what are the criteria is going to be. I define MVP as the player who does the most to put his team in position to win a championship. Obviously, you're not going to win a championship in the regular season. But to me, the yeah. regular season is about positioning yourself, you know, trying to get the top seed, A, trying to qualify for the playoffs, positioning yourself for the championship. What player meant the most? I put a lot of emphasis on that most. And I define value as contributing to winning and as to putting your, yeah. your team on a course yeah win a championship you don't have to win a championship i thought lebron right. should have been the mvp in the 2015 nba finals even though they didn't win he did the most mm. to put his team mm. in position to win the championship in that series mm. My God. Okay. all right well let me ask you this uh, uh we're going to switch gears i'm gonna ask you a baseball question on the way out ja true story <laughs> and if you ever been to cambridge massachusetts they move a little different in cambridge than than the rest of <laughs> massachusetts and maybe even the rest of the country uh, Berkeley can relate Berkeley uh, in California. So uh, Saturday night, I was in a restaurant in Cambridge. It was after 6 p.m. on the TV. No sign of March Madness. Instead, World Baseball Classic USA versus Venezuela. And they were going crazy when Venezuela did something. A lot of uh, Venezuelans in the room going crazy when Venezuela hit a home run. And so World Baseball Classic, I think it means a lot more outside of the to, to some outside of the United States than it does to us. But look, I'm excited. Jay, I love what it's become. I love the final Japan versus US. How do you see this thing uh, uh, playing out? Just like just your perspective on the World Baseball Classic. Hey, I hope we get to see Shohei Otane pitching against Mike Trout. How great that would, would that fun. be? And yeah. you know, just the anticipation and, and in watching this, I was watching a lot last night. Uh, that that Mexico Japan game was as great a baseball game as you're ever going to see with 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 a walk off hit to to end it, and I, you know, a this is what baseball should be like, but b uh, you get the anticipation, and you know we get on, we're used to anticipation in October, and I think that's what baseball is built on the moment. Okay, the closer is facing the cleanup hitter of the other team, you know, with with the the winning run on base, etc. You know, that, that anticipation, the drama, and we're getting that from this. And we're getting the passion that we don't normally see in baseball in America. We're seeing how much this sport means to other countries. And you just wonder if some of that can spread and can catch and can last here in the United States. Because this is what baseball yeah. should be like. Fun, passionate, right. dramatic, all that stuff. My one last thing, they should play it in the middle of the summer. Just take a break, shut it down like, like NHL yeah. and the Olympics and just play it in the summer. So, Michael, that you don't have to choose between this and March Madness or a big NBA fun, matchup. Fun, passionate, sometimes dramatic, but in a good way. That describes Jay Adande. Good to see you, brother. <laughs> hey, what can you come on in April so we can talk NFL draft? That's it. Go to break. Yeah. Go to break. <laughs> no, go, go to break. No, 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 no. Hey, thank you for watching Brother From Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget, you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.